How you doing? <laughs> I love, you can be seated. I love what is happening at Christ for the Nations Institute. I love God's moving here. The same spirit of revival that is happening here now was happening when I was here because the summer school that I started in the summer of 1974, uh, God was moving, the Jesus people, was, Jesus people movement was happening, and the school grew from a couple of hundred students that summer to almost a thousand students, 900 and something students uh, by September. And it was, God was moving. It was so awesome. It was so amazing. And the same spirit, I feel, is back here now with the leadership of Dutch Sheets, with the leadership of Kenny Price. I think God is doing the same thing. God is raising up a spirit of revival in this generation, and you guys are going to go out there and make it happen like nobody's business. I believe that with all of my heart. God is doing it, and He's doing it through you. Amen? Are you excited about revival in your generation? Amen. I'm excited. Uh, I have a new book at the printers. It's called N Compass, Navigating Your Team Forward. It just went to the printers. It's almost available. This would be an awesome Father's Day gift or gift to your pastor, okay? Uh, what will happen is we'll mail it to you, and you'll get it by Father, before Father's Day so that you, that you can give it. But I wanted to give a special deal to you guys, Okay. Here's the special deal, because it's at the printers, it's being printed right now, it should take a couple of weeks to get out, all right? If you go to my website, nordicministries.com, and you order it, and you're from CFNI, if you buy one, I'll send you one for free, a signed copy. You buy one, they're $19.99, you buy one, you'll get one free. It's a hardcover book with a dust cover, 230 pages. This book is a leadership book. I put in it 99 words that begin with the N sound, like encourage and envision and attach to it stories and scriptures and, and things that will encourage you in leadership. It's a great leadership book. It's a great fathering book. It's a great pastoral book. This will be something that you can actually use in your ministry in uh, creatively leading others. It's called Encompass Navigating Your Team Forward. Now, the first 100 students that order this, you're going to buy one and get one free, okay? So you need to do it. You need to do it quick. Just don't wait. Don't say, I'll do it, do it sometime later. But if you go on our website and you order it, give us a good address, not the address of your empty dorm room for us to send it to, and we'll send you one for free. We'll, you buy one, you get another one for free. That way, uh, you'll be all set for Father's Day, and it'll be an awesome gift and an awesome present for you to give. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, uh, I want to do a little segment before we start of what I did not learn at Bible school. What I did not learn at Bible school. How many of you love the teaching here at Christ of the Nations Institute? You've learned a lot. You've grown a lot. You know, I think I learned as much having roommates as I did in the classrooms, and so it was this total learning experience, which was awesome. But things that I did not learn at Bible college, one time uh, Cindy and I were uh, ministering uh, at a church. We were part of a church in Tyler, Texas, and I'll actually talk about that a little bit later, but uh, opportunities open up. I play guitar. I lead praise and worship, and so opportunities were opening up, and uh, we got involved with some different kinds of ministries. We were involved with full gospel businessmen and women's aglow, and because I was musical, they, they opened up the opportunity for us to come to these events and lead praise and worship. So one afternoon, we were at a women's aglow meeting at a hotel uh, meeting room, Women's Aglow, oh yeah, and uh, there were about, I don't know, 40 women at this meeting and a special guest speaker, and I led the praise and worship, and you know, it was all going really good, and it was great, and there were probably about, I don't know, three or four men that were there, you know, to, to help, you know, with the offering stuff and to help with ministry time and, and all of that. So we led the praise and worship, the guest speaker got up to speak, and and she was awesome. She was anointed, and things were happening. She did the altar call. Ladies are coming forward to get ministered to. She's praying for ladies, and ladies are falling out under the power. And, and of course, there were three or four men, and we were helping, you know, to catch the ladies. And so I get behind this lady, and she was taller than me, and, you know, she was there, and I was behind. And so she was praying for her, and I'm braced and ready. And so God moves on her, and she's going down, and I'm helping her down, and on the way down, I hear this whoosh, 
and the seat of my pants disappeared. The seam down the middle, the, the you know, pants seam rapture occurred, and it was gone in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. So I let her down, you know, made sure she didn't hit her head, and then I turned around and I backed up to the guest speaker's table, you know, because we all had lunch, and so the lady guest speaker, she's there, and I'm standing here. I'm just standing there, you know. And they didn't teach me this at Bible school. They didn't tell me what happens when your pants go out, you know. You have a blowout. What happens? What do you do? I didn't know what to do. So I backed up to the speaker's table. I'm just there, you know. It's like, oh, yeah, God's moving. Things are awesome. And the lady speaker, she's right next to me. She's still praying for people. She goes, Brother, get behind this lady. I said, no. <laughs> she looked at me funny. She said, brother, get behind this lady. I said, no. So she looked at me. She goes, brother, is something wrong? I went, yeah. So she leans over so I could whisper in her. I said, I just lost the seat of my pants. She said, oh, brother, come here. Get behind this lady. And so, anyway, I'm standing there. I'm thinking, okay, I, di I didn't have this class. My instructors didn't teach me this. I don't know what to do. Anyway, so th there's ladies, you know, laying out all in front of us and stuff. And the, the lady laying in front of me, I'm standing there by the guest speaker's table. I'm, you know, now I've, I've turned into security. I'm making sure everything's going okay, you know. The lady laying down on the floor in front of me, my pastor, he was really tall, six foot something, and his jacket was on this lady's legs. So I'm just, you know, there and ready and waiting, and so she's kind of coming around. So I help her out, and I took the jacket of my pastor, and I just put it on. It was down to here, you know? It was like really long because he's really tall. I just put it on like I knew what I was doing, you know? I help her up, put on the jacket, and left the building, went home five minutes away, changed clothes, and came back. But they don't teach you this in Bible school. They don't teach you what to do when you have uh, clothing situations, you know, like, like you know, what, what is the class about, you know, what, what do you do if you're preaching and your zipper's down? Or what do you do if you're preaching and, you know, your pants go out? Or what do you do if you go into the bathroom and your microphone is still on, you know, or, you know, stuff like that. And, they, they, you know, just we need some practical classes like this for, for when we encounter these things. Amen? You know? Apparel 101, you know, or I don't know, something like that. But anyways, I just wanted to throw that in. Uh, turn in your Bible, if you will, to, at, or, uh, to Psalms. Excuse me, we'll start in Psalms. Chapter 84, Psalms 84. And while you're turning, I want you to say this out loud. God always opens doors for me. Now, all through this message this morning... I am going to give you a cue at different times, and when I say, because, exactly, that's exactly what I want you to do. Now, I want you to do it with feeling. Now, uh, you know, this is something else you need to know, is your emphasis when you're preaching is really important, and this is also how you learn how to meditate on the Word, okay? Like if you read through the Bible and you get to John 3.16 and you go, God's love the world gave his only God's son whosoever believed in him, not perish, have everlasting life. There's no feeling. There's no meaning. It's just like, bleh, you know. It's the, but there's so much life and passion in that verse. And so you have to learn how to put some life into the things that you say, because when you're declaring things, especially now, here you are, you know, some of you first-year students, second-year students, third-year students, launching out, getting ready, you know, something new, something different, something's getting ready to happen. You have to get yourself in the gear of expectancy, because you are awesome, and God is awesome, and God is getting ready to do some awesome things, and even if you can't see it, and even if you can't feel it, you need to get your expectancy up, because God's going to do it whether you can see it or not. He's doing it now. He's preparing the groundwork now for you. And it's going to be amazing. You'll be amazed when you stand there. So you've got to get your expectancy up because 
God always opens doors for me. Let's say it together. God always opens doors for me. Say it again. God always opens doors for me. One more time. God always opens doors for me. Okay? I want you to gear yourself for that because your eyes need to be open, your spirit needs to be open, your faith needs to be open for what God's getting ready to do next or you could miss it. Case in point, Jesus, the Son of God, the answer to all of our problems, the answer to every situation on the planet showed up and the people he was sent to deliver didn't get it. If that could happen then, it could happen now. If God could move the most powerful move of God on the planet in all of history, sending his son Jesus Christ to die on a cross for us and a whole generation of people who knew the scriptures backwards and forwards didn't get it, then we had better get our expectancy up and get ready to receive so that when it's standing in front of us, we can recognize it, grasp it, go with it, because... (laughs) God always opens a door for me. Look at Psalms chapter 84 and look at verse 10. We're going to look at 10, 11, and 12, Psalms 84. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those who walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the one who trusts in you because... (laughs) I want you to look at someone next to you and say it. This ought to be your theme verse right here. This, this right here in Psalm 84 ought to be your theme verse, okay? God's going to open a door for you, but in order for you to go through that door, you have to be near it. You have to be by the door so that when it opens, you can walk in, okay? Jesus told the Pharisees and the people around him, he says, you know what? The door is open, and many of you, not only do you not go in, but you're trying to prevent everybody else from going in. God's got some open doors for you, but you got to go find the door so that you can be ready to go in, okay? This psalmist writes, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord. Get ready to be a doorkeeper. Your mentality is going to have to shift. You're going to have have to have an expectancy of what's behind the door and what God's going to get ready to do next so that you can be in the right place at the right time, getting ready for the right thing to happen because it's going to be awesome. Go over to Acts chapter 3. Let's look at one of these type situations right now. Acts chapter 3, starting in verse 1. It says this, now Peter and John were going up to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour, and a lame man from birth was being carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple that is called the beautiful gate, to ask alms of those entering into the temple. Seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked to receive alms. Peter directed his gaze at him, as did John, and said, look at us, and he fixed his attention on them, expecting to receive something from them. But Peter said, I have no silver and gold, but what I do have I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. He took him by the right hand and raised him up, and immediately his feet and ankles were made strong. And leaping up, he stood and began to walk and entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God, and the people saw him. Okay. Here's this man. He was born lame. No opportunity. Okay? No way to get around. No open door. He had the choice of sitting there staring at his crippled legs all day long, or he could do something about it. He didn't have the ability to get himself around. But there's four things that he did that made all the difference in the world, okay? He knew his opportunity wasn't going to be sitting at home. Now, I don't even know if he had a home. I don't know. Maybe he lived on somebody's front porch. No door, you know? 
And maybe these people, he had some, he had some kind of connection with somebody because somebody carried him every day to the gate. Somebody, he had somebody. He had something, he had some kind of connection with someone. I don't know if it was a family member. I don't know if it was a friend. I don't know if it was someone with a charitable heart that just reached out to the guy. But somebody carried him every day to that gate. So he had some kind of connection, okay? You have connections. You have somebody that you know somewhere, some, some possibilities that somewhere that could be your direction. How many of you know what you're going to do after school? You know where you're going. You know you're going to go to work for a church. You're going to go here. You're going to work this job. You're going to do that. You know. How many of you don't know? Wow. Look at that. A whole bunch of you. This message is for you because... <laughs> Now, I'm going to have to teach you how to do this because you guys, you, you guys need to put more into this, okay? You need to put more into it, all right? Let's take the sentence. I'm going to teach you how to meditate the word. I'm going to teach you how to, this exercise will help you be a better speaker, okay? Let's take the sentence, I never said she was cute. I never said she was cute, all right? Okay, check this out. This is amazing. I never said she was cute. What does that mean? Someone else may have. How about this? I never said she was cute. <laughs> How about this? I never said she was cute. I thought it all day, but I never came out of my mouth. I never said she was cute. It was someone else. <laughs> I never said she was cute. She is I never said she was cute. She's dropped dead. Oh, my gosh. Okay. The emphasis you put on whichever word changes the meaning of the whole sentence. That's how you meditate on the word. You take a scripture verse in the Bible and you emphasize a different word each time. And all of a sudden, you're drawing out of that word all kinds of, you know, every word from God in this Bible is full of God. It's full of revelation. It's full of insight. It's full of wisdom. And if you learn how to meditate the Word of God, then all of a sudden you'll get a whole lot more out of it. Okay? So, God always opens doors for me. You can do the same thing with that. Okay? How many of you don't know what you're going to do? Raise your hand. How many of you don't know? Okay. You need to get your expectancy up. You need to crank it up and get this expectancy up. Maybe there's no opportunities in front of you that you can see, but you have a connection. That's where this guy started. He had somebody that carried him. He had someone. He had something. He had somebody that could carry him to the gate. So, okay, what did they do? They carried him daily, daily, daily. Look at someone and say daily. Did it every day, 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 every day. This is something he did all the time. It's not what you do once in a while that makes a difference in your life and your ministry. It's what you do every day. It's what you pray every day. It's what you think every day. It's what you tell other people every day that's going to make all the difference in your ministry and the flow and the opportunities that open up in front of you every day. Every day. It's not what you eat every day. It's not what you eat once in a while that makes you healthy or unhealthy. It's what you eat every day. It's funny, my, uh, my oldest grandson, he just turned 11. He was over to our house one day, and we were having, I don't know, we were having tacos or something. And he goes, where are the sides? I said, what? He goes, where are the sides? I said, sides, what are you talking about? He's been watching the cooking network on TV. Where are the sides? There's supposed to be sides. You're supposed to have all the food groups represented here in every meal. I'm like, shut up. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> you know, it's like if, if you have to have a three-course meal with dessert, breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day, what is that going to do to your arteries? You know, every day, every day, every day, every day. This guy went to the to a place every day, every day, every day. Why? The opportunity wasn't going to be at home. It wasn't going to come and find him. He had to go find it, and he had to do it every day. Every day. He couldn't just sit back and say, well, God will bring it to me. 
No, man. He, he got his friends to pick him up and carry him somewhere every single day. He didn't ever wake up and go, oh, I don't want to bother them today. No, it's like every day. We're doing this. And where did he go? He went to the beautiful gate. There was a gate of the temple in Jerusalem. It's called the beautiful gate. Actually, that, that word for beautiful gate could be translated a couple of different things. One of the translations was ripeness. It's actually the gate that at the Feast of Tabernacles, they would carry ripe fruit into through the gate into the city uh, for the celebration of the Feast of Tabernacles. It was a gate of ripeness. It was a beautiful gate. He didn't go to any gate. He went to the beautiful gate. He went to the gate where there were ripe opportunities available for him every day. And that's how he made his living. That's how he ate. He, he, he parked himself at the right place, a beautiful gate, a place where there was going to be opportunities. Okay? And he put himself there every day, the beautiful gate. God's got some beautiful opportunities for you. God's got some beautiful open doors for you. God's got some things that he's going to do with you. But you have got to get up and go and get there. It didn't say they carried him daily and set him out in front of the tavern. It didn't say they carried him every day and set him out in front of Cinemark. So that maybe someone would buy him a movie ticket. And he could pass the time away thinking of something else. No. They set him at a place of opportunity that was beautiful. He, had a, he parked himself in a beautiful place, okay? Then he did something. He didn't just sit there looking pitiful. He opened his mouth. He opened his mouth. Why? Because God always opens doors for me. Let's say it again. God always opens doors for me. He opened his mouth. He became obnoxious. He didn't just sit there and be in the way. He said, hey, 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 you, hey, wait, hey, you, hey, hey. Have any of you ever been down shopping in Mexico? Oh, my gosh. Hey, come into my store, 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 come into my store. This guy at the gate, beautiful, I think he was like that. He's like, alms, alms, hi, I'm down here, hello. Everyone knew the top of his head, you know, it's because he's sitting down there. Hi, hello. He was obnoxiously loud. Okay? He opened his mouth. There were opportunities there, but he had to take them. He had to take them. Here come Peter and John one day. The temple beautiful. The, the gate beautiful at the temple. Here they come. Here they come. This guy sees them. He opens his mouth. He says, hey, alms. Alms over here. Alms. Peter looks at him. John looks at him. They said, look at us. You are the answer to somebody's situation. You are the answer to somebody's need. You are the answer to somebody's longing and wanting and, and, and turn around. You are the breakthrough that they're looking for. And you're walking along minding your own business and all of a sudden somebody's being obnoxious. You are the answer to the situation. You're going to the right place. You're going at the right time. God's going to open doors for you and it's going to be awesome. This thing turned the whole temple around. This crippled guy was the key to the temple. Jesus had been crucified. Jesus had been risen from the dead, but everything had calmed down. And now Peter and John are minding their own business, coming in at the hour of prayer. Here's this guy crippled from birth. He's sitting at the gate. He's just waiting there. He says, alms. Peter opens up his mouth and says, I don't have any silver and gold. That's not going to meet your need. I've got something better that's going to really meet your need. That's not only going to change your life, it's going to change everybody's life inside this building. Peter said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise and walk. And he didn't wait on the Lord, and he didn't stop. And he said, okay, now let's pray. He grabbed the guy by the hand, pulled him up into the air. The guy's flying through the air. And while he's flying through the air, his legs popped out. He got brand new feet, which he landed on. And he runs into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And everybody knew who this guy was. He was the key to revival in the temple. And Peter and John unlocked it. God always opens doors for you. Open doors for Peter and John. Open doors for this crippled man. God's opening doors left and right. 
You get ready for some open doors to happen because God's doing it, and he's doing it now. And you feel like, oh, okay, school's out, school's over. Okay, things are changing. I don't see anything. You better get your expectancy up, or you're going to miss the door, man, because the doors are there. The doors are coming. They're right there in front of you. I remember one time, uh, Cindy and I had been involved in ministry after Bible school. You know, God had just really helped us and, and put things. When we graduated from Bible school, we didn't have a car. We had to borrow a car to go on our honeymoon. You know, I mean, we had no opportunities. We had no money. We had no direction. God had given us a couple of opportunities, and we got the ball rolling a little bit. But we were, we were stuck in Dallas at a certain point, and I was working at a margarine factory. Uh, you know, just the weirdest environment ever, working at uh, Shed's Margarine Factory downtown Dallas, slipperiest place I've ever worked in my life. You had to really watch it, you know. He's, people falling everywhere. It's crazy. So we were praying. It's like, God, what do we do? 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 Well, Cindy pulls out a map. This is my wife, Cindy, over here. Wave, Cindy. That I met at Christ for the Nations. All the very important things in my life happened here at Christ for the Nations. I got saved here. I got filled with the Holy Ghost right over here. I got baptized in the pool right out here. I met Cindy at Christian Center across the street over here, and we got married before the rapture occurred. All the important things <laughs> happened before, you know, all of that. So anyway, so we're in Dallas. I'm working in the margarine factory. Cindy pulls out a map. She goes, let's see, what does God want to do? She got her expectancy up. She just cranked it up. She's like, okay, let's see. She goes, Tyler, Tyler's not very far away. We could still come back and go shopping. You know, you have to keep your priorities straight, right? So we could still drive back and go shopping. Tyler, that's a good place. Tyler would be a good place to live, Tyler. So we would go to church, you know, uh, people would say, hey, Spencer, Cindy, what are you guys doing? Cindy goes, we're moving to Tyler. And I'd look at her like, what the heck are you talking about? We're moving to Tyler. We're going to Tyler. Oh, Tyler. Tyler is where we're going. We're going to Tyler. And so finally one day we were at home and, uh, you know, I, I said, hey, okay, you keep telling people we're going to Tyler. What the heck? We didn't know anybody in Tyler. We had met one couple one time the week before our honeymoon in Tyler that lived in Tyler. We didn't know anybody there. I said, honey... Stop telling people we're going to Tyler. And she goes, like she did many times in our marriage, well, have you prayed about it? Well, I had not prayed about it because it sounded so stupid to me. So I was, so, you know, I was upset. You know, I'm like, okay, then I'll go pray. I went in the other room. I closed the door and I got on my knees and I started praying. And God says, I want you to go to Tyler and help start a teaching center. And I'm like, crud. So I came out of the room, and I said, okay, we're going to Tyler. God spoke to me. We're supposed to go to Tyler and help raise up a teaching center. She goes, oh, really? I was just kidding. I just made that up. You know, sometimes, you, you know, you think you're making it up. You're not making it up. God's doing it. So we sold everything, packed up what we had left in our two-door Oldsmobile Cutlass Supreme car. And went to Tyler. We pull into Tyler. We get a newspaper so that we can look at stuff that's for rent. Little, you know, house, something that we could afford for rent. So we're looking at that. In the newspaper, there's an article. It says, come to Living Word Christian Center and find out what God wants for Tyler. Prophetess Beth Alvis will speak. And so we went, well, if we're going to move to Tyler, maybe we should find out what God wants for Tyler. We should go. So we went to the church and we're visiting, and, you know, we're, we're standing around talking to people, meeting people, and the pastor's wife comes up to Cindy and goes, hi. Cindy goes, hello. She goes, uh, where are you guys from? Cindy said, well, we're from Dallas. We're just moving here. The pastor's wife goes, have you heard of Christ for the Nations Institute? Cindy says, yes, we graduated from there pastor's wife says, well, what do you do? Cindy says, well, we work with children and youth. And the pastor's wife turns around and grabs the pastor and goes, they're here, they're here, they're here. Three ladies in the church had been praying and fasting for three days 
that God would send them a young couple from Christ for the Nations to work with their children and youth. The ladies were Carol Cartwright, Barbara Wentrobel, and Jean Kreisel. And it was, we were there a year and a half. I mean, they hired us, you know, kind of like a part-time salary. But, we, I mean, we were in. We learned so much in that year and a half. It was amazing. We couldn't believe it. It was awesome. And while we were there, God opened so many doors. This was a door that opened doors. We got involved with Full Gospel Businessmen, got involved with Women's Aglow, which got us involved with Charles and Francis Hunter, which got us involved with the Osteen family. We were doing children's meetings for Charles and Francis Hunter down in Houston at the City of Light, and the Osteen girls were babysitting the nursery. So we got to meet the Osteen family, got to be friends with them. The doors that opened the doors that opened the doors that opened the doors that opened the doors. God's got open doors for you. There are open doors out there, and you can't see them. And you probably won't see them. See, we were in Dallas. I was working in a margarine factory. The door wasn't there. The door that God had for me wasn't at Shed's Margarine Factory in Dallas. I had to pray and find where the door was, and then I had to go park myself in front of the door so that the opportunity could open up to me. There's opportunities out there that are waiting for you. You are perfectly crafted, perfectly trained, perfectly ready for God to use you in a powerful way. Are you ready? Are you ready? God's wanting to open doors for you. You're going to walk up to that door. It's not even going to look like it's, you know, it's this lame guy. He comes up to the temple beautiful. I mean, he's not beautiful. The, the gate is beautiful. He's not beautiful. This is like, this doesn't compute. This doesn't quite go together. You might feel like your opportunities are limited. You might feel like, well, this isn't really happening, you know, like, like I thought, like I wanted it to. Uh, but you know what? Go park yourself there and do it every day and do it all the time and do it until the door opens. God shows you where the door is. Go get there. And when you get there, God's going to start to work and it's going to blow that thing wide open. It's going to be awesome because... I want you to stand up to your feet. I know some of you have to leave early, but I want to give you an opportunity. If you don't have the open door, if you don't have the opportunity, if you don't know what you're going to do, I want you to come down to the front. Come on. Come down to the front. I know some of you have to go because you have work and stuff like that. But if that's you, I want to pray for you. I want you to come down to the front right now because we're going to pray. God's doing awesome things. God's doing amazing things. You're more awesome than you, than you even realize. You're more amazing than you realize. I mean, this whole time, you've been preparing yourself. You've been sitting in this environment, this atmosphere of anointing. You have anointing in you. I mean, you're going to be like Peter walking down the street. His shadow is healing people. Stuff's going to happen around you. You don't even realize what's happening because there's so much anointing. Come on, move into the middle here. Squeeze in, everybody. Come on, move up, move up, move up, move up. Just squeeze in. I want to pray for you. God's going to open doors for you. But you got you got to do a couple of things. You got to move out. Maybe maybe it's your your friend that has an opportunity. Maybe it's a family member that has an opportunity. Maybe you heard about something. Some if nothing else, just think about what you like, and go. You know what? I'm going to go park myself there, and volunteer and serve. Be obnoxious. You know, just get in the middle of it. Make some noise. Get in the middle of it. Be the best server you can be. Be the best helper you can be. Be the best person. And I, I had no idea I would go into children's and youth ministry when I was here at Christ for the Nations. No idea. No idea. I mean, back then, children's and youth ministry wasn't like an established thing. It was very kumbaya. People were still doing flannel graphs. You have no idea what that even is. It's a whole different game now. Why is it a whole different game now? Because, because people like Kenny Price, people like Steve Munns, people, people who got a vision for youth ministry stood up and did something different. We're going to pray. God's going to open doors. I mean, I can just, I can feel the ground shaking right now of opportunity that is in front of you. And when you go, man, it's just going to, it's going to pop wide open. You're just cruising along because you live in this anointing, you know? I mean, you, you, you worship God every day. Well, that's a good habit to have. Don't ever stop that. 
Have a word life. Have a prayer life. Have a worship life. Personal. Every day. And then what's on the inside of you is going to blow those doors open before you. And it's going to be so awesome. Lift up your hands to the Lord. We're going to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, you called these students here. You called them here for a divine purpose, for a divine reason. God, there's awesome things that you're going to do. You're going to do. Father, they're out there. The doors are out there. Lord, just like when Cindy opened up a map and said, we're going to Tyler. I thank you, Lord God, that these students, they're going to just look at a map. They're just going to see, okay, here's something that I'm supposed to do. Okay, I just feel this in my spirit. I don't have a lot of direction, but I have a little direction, and I'm going to take this direction. Father, baptize these students with boldness to step out and to go where the door is. Father, in Jesus' name, let them get their friends to help. Let them get their families to help. Father, in Jesus' name, give them the conviction, Lord, to go forward. Give them the conviction to move out. Give them the conviction, Father, in Jesus' name, to move toward the door so that you can open it for them. Father, I thank you the Spirit of God is on them right now in Jesus' name. I thank you in the name of Jesus that no mountain can stand in the way. No barrier can stand in their way. I thank you that you're even removing the speed bumps out of the way so they won't even slow down. But Father, they'll blast open those doors in front of them. And Father, everything will change. Not only will they change, but Father, the environments that you send them into will change. The cities you send them to will change. The churches you send them to will change. Father, in the name of Jesus, now is the time. Today is the day. You have designed this from of old. You have been planning this for a long time. God, I pray in Jesus' name that the fire that's on the inside of each one of these students. Father, would just blast out of them. Father, like on the day of Pentecost. Father, their heads were on fire. I thank you that these students in Jesus' name, they're going to go out and burn it up. They're going to go out and change the world. They're going to go out and do things, Lord God, that they didn't even think were possible. But Father, you put it in them. You placed it upon them. Father, you're going to flow through them in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit of God, do it now. Do it now. Father, let their expectancy rise up on the inside of them. I thank you that they're going to know things that they didn't know. I thank you that they're going to say things that they didn't think. I thank you that they're going to Father, break out into areas Lord God, where there's been trouble and, and violence and problems and addictions. And Father, in Jesus' name, they're going to blast onto the scene. They're going to be like Peter, silver and gold have I none, but what I have I give you in the name of Jesus Christ. Rise and walk in a generation that's been crippled because their focus has been wrong. Father, they're going to wake up. They're going to get up. They're going to be healed. They're going to be restored. They're going to be made whole and they're going to run into their generation and cause a difference to occur. Father, we release it to happen on every one of these students. In Jesus' name, the open doors. The open doors. God, we pray the open doors. The open doors. The open doors. Right now, God, you're unlocking them. Right now, you're unlatching them. Right now, Father, you're undoing them. Father, these doors in Jesus' name that are just ahead. Father, you're preparing the way. You're preparing the way. Do it, God. Do it. Do it, God. You are God. You are Lord. There is none else. You are mighty. You are awesome. You are amazing. You get all the glory. You get all the praise. But Father, we move out in Jesus' name to those doors. We move out in Jesus' name to get there to these places that you want us to go. Lift up your hands. Say this with me. In the name of Jesus, I submit myself to the plans of God. I submit myself to the path that God has for me. I will move out. I will find my door. I will be there. I will plant myself. I will serve. I will say the right things. I will do the right things. I will be the doorkeeper in the name of Jesus. No one will be able to move me until God opens that door and I will move in and take hold of the things that God has for me in the name of Jesus. Now give the Lord a big round of praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Oh, we bless you. We praise you. We glorify you. You are awesome, God. You are mighty. You are mighty. You are mighty. You are mighty. There's some doors, says the Lord. There's some doors, says the Lord. There's some doors, says the Lord. I've already put the key in your hand. There's a key in your hand. The key is somebody that you know. The key is somewhere that I've put on your heart. That sometime in prayer, when you were down at the altar, I put something on your heart. That's a key, says the Lord. Be sure to use that key. Be sure to unlock that. Unlock it in prayer. Unlock it with your faithfulness. Unlock it with your steps. Unlock it, says the Lord. The keys are in your hand. I have given you the keys of the kingdom. What Whatever you unlock will be unlocked. Don't be afraid to step out. Don't be afraid to move out. Don't be afraid. Don't hold back. Don't hold back, says the Lord. Now is not the time for holding back. 
Now is not the time for taking it easy. Now is not the time for taking a post-Bible school vacation. Now is the time, says the Lord, to take the keys that I have placed in your hand. Those clues, those cues, those things that I've shown you in prayer and begin to move towards those doors, says the Lord. Because when you get there, you'll see them open. When you get there, you'll see, you'll see, you'll see, you'll see, says the Lord. You don't see it now, but you will see it. Don't hold back, says the Lord. I'm going to do it for you. I'm going to do it. Have I not called you? Have I not placed my spirit upon you? I didn't do it for no reason. I didn't do it for uh, a mundane existence. I didn't do it so you could stay home and watch television. I did it so that you could impact your generation. I did it so you could change things that are around you. The Lord is saying to you today, everywhere you go and everything that you do is going to have an impact. The spirit and presence of God is with you, is for you, goes before you, prepares the way. Say, I receive it, God. Say, I receive it, God. God. Say, I receive it, God. I receive it, God. I receive it. All the anointing, all the anointings, all the equippings in Jesus' name. Let me tell you what. It doesn't matter if you can see it or not. We're, Cindy and I were talking about this on the way over. The second commandment is, thou shalt not make unto thyself any graven images. And it's because God doesn't want us focused on natural things. He wants us focused on spiritual things. You've got natural circumstances in front of you. It's like, well, I don't have a car. Well, I don't have an opportunity. Well, I don't have a job. I don't have an open door. Don't focus on those things. God calls things that are not as though they were. Start calling them. Every time you open your car door, God always opens doors for me. Every time you walk through these doors, God always opens a door for me. Every time you go into the cafeteria, God always opens. Every time you see a door, God always opens doors for me. Get that in your spirit. Get that in your heart. All of a sudden, lift up your expectations so that everywhere that you go, you're looking for the door. Everywhere that you go, you're looking for the opportunity. All of a sudden, doors excite you. All of a sudden, doorknobs are amazing. All of a sudden, door knockers. It's like, wow, that's, that's fascinating. Is it because you're looking for the door. God always opens doors for me. God always opens doors for me. God always opens doors for me. And you'll find, <laughs> you'll find the most amazing breakthroughs and opportunities. Right now they're unseen, but God's getting ready to show them to you. He's going to reveal it and it's going to be awesome in one moment, in one moment, one act, one word, one thing, one Peter grabs this guy, lifts him up, says, be healed. They go into the temple. Everything changed. Everything changed. Didn't look to him like it was ever going to change. Doesn't matter what it looks like. In a moment, it changed. It's going to change for you. Father, I pray over these students that the grace of God, the ability of God would go before them and help them. That you would, Father, pave the way and lay the path, Father, in Jesus' name, straight to the doors of opportunity that you have for them. God, you are so good. You see the end from the beginning. You see it all, God. And we have nothing to worry about. Father, we're not going to waste our time worrying. We're going to build up our expectancy because... God always opens a door for me. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Come on. Thank Him. Thank Him. Praise Him. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. You know what? Close your eyes. I want you to see doors. Close your eyes. I want you to see doors. Picture a door. Picture a door. Picture a door. Picture a door. You see it? You see it? Do you see it? Okay, open your eyes. What does your door look like? Is it brown? Is it black? Is it red? It's brown. Does it have a knob? Does it have a knocker? Does it have a window? Yeah, has all those. What would your door look like? How many of you had a brown door with a knob? <laughs> We're going to have to get a little more creative. God's got some very creative. God's a creative God. He's going to have some amazing doors for you. How many of you had a red door? <laughs> Exciting. A fiery door. How many of you had a different color than brown or red? What color was your door? White? I like that. What color was your door? Huh? White? You got a white door thing happening right over here. Put yourself in the gear of looking for the door. Okay? The door is out there. It's there. The door is there. I can tell you from experience, from being right where you are to what I've been through in the last almost 40 years, 
I graduated in 1976. So in a couple of years, it'll be my 40th anniversary of graduating from here, okay? I can tell you with almost 40 years of experience, the door is there. It's there. You got to just begin moving. Just move out. Doesn't even matter if you're going the wrong direction. God will fix that. Don't worry about it. Just take the clue that's in your heart, the key that God's given you, and begin to move. Father, in Jesus' name, I just release the anointing of God that as these students move out, as they move forward, as they do what you've called them to do, Father, as they take a step of faith, that you're going to meet them there with an open door in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. God bless you guys. We're going to be praying for you. Good things are happening. Amen. Praise God. Kenny, do you have anything else? Okay. All right. God bless you. You're going to have an awesome summer. Because that's what 